Hey anglers, thanks for tuning in again today. My name is Steve Cooper and you're watching In Deep on the Delta. Today we're doing a video that I call Fishing Between the Buoys and it is the third video in a series of videos that I call Becoming a Hydrilla Gorilla. The first video we named Becoming a Hydrilla Gorilla focused on locating offshore honey holes primarily during the winter months and primarily in in submerged vegetation. That was our first video. The second video we called baits and rigging and that was talking about all of the baits and the rigging that we're using from the basic uh, riggings to the advanced riggings. So that was the second video. The third video that we're doing today fishing between the buoys is going to focus on the techniques and the strategies that we use once we have uh, our locations uh, in order and we know the baits and the rigging. So if you haven't watched the first two I will put uh, a link in the description so you'll be uh, able to go back and watch those videos and I'm excited about today's video because once you get all three of these hopefully uh, you're gonna have a good foundation to go out and start locating some new honey holes that you can use for uh, for not only your wintertime fishing but also these are going to uh, bleed over into the the spring and summertime months. So with that, let's get going. We're going to talk about strategies and techniques. I've got a buoy set up out in front of this dock. You can't see it now. But before we get up there, I'd like to talk about one of the key pieces of information that I can give you, and that is boat positioning and how you approach the areas after you know that they're there. It doesn't matter where you are. Wherever you've located your spots, this is the important thing to remember, and that's how you approach them. Now let's just say, as we go around this dock and we know we have a spot up there from our previous trip where we've located a number of these holes that we want to come back and fish, we know that it's there and the big advantage that we have now is that simply we know that spot's there. So we're going to pull up. We're not going to overrun that spot and spook the fish. We're going to stop the, uh, the big motor well in advance of our area, our prime area, and we're going to motor in with our trolling motor very stealthy. We're going to set up in, an, in a position that is going to allow, allow us to fish that area before the fish know that we're there. And that's something that you have to work on out here because on a day where the wind's blowing and it's choppy, you may have, you know, you can get up on the fish, you know, 20 feet away and they, they don't know you're there. On a day where there's no wind and it's perfectly calm, and you have maybe a uh, water clarity that's eight or 10 feet, you're gonna have to pull way off of that spot. So that's something that you have to figure out. But I wanted to just go over, be, be aware of your boat positioning and also be aware of your landmarks. Cause remember what we're doing today is just demonstrating. This buoy will not be in the spot that it is now. I'm just using that for demonstration. When you come out here, on your own and you're going to pull up to the spot the buoy won't be there so my uh, for for instance today my landmark might be that big tree up there I'll, I'm going to move this around might be that big tree I know when I hit that big tree or maybe between these two docks I know exactly there's a good spot out there and it doesn't have to be a lane in the hydrilla it could be an old a log that's sunken down it can be a uh, a clam bed, it can be whatever it may be that's going to be your honey hole. We've got that marked. So let's pull up and we'll pull up to the buoy and then we're going to start talking about the bait. Alright guys, we've pulled up and hopefully you can see our buoy up there. And as I said before, that's just a little honey hole. That we... I just want you to be aware of if we're fishing a lane out there and maybe it's two feet wide and six feet long, the hydrilla or whatever vegetation we're fishing just doesn't stop in a wall. It, there could be dense vegetation, vegetation on each side of it, but in between where it's very dense and there is a, a lane, there's going to be some, we'll just call it secondary vegetation. It's not growing like it is in the jungle, but it's, it's still growing. It's just not growing as uh, thick as it does in the jungle. 
So we're going to want to be fishing not only the lane, but in that transition zone and on the edges of the very thick vegetation. Again, today we're talking about bottom bouncing baits, mostly worms and creature baits, plastic baits, things that we use in the winter. But this area could transition over into the spring and summer and you can use any bait in here that you want. Maybe uh, swim baits, uh, weedless swim baits, Kytex. You can throw, uh, I've just got a few things that were on my deck. You can throw some, some blades in there. You can throw rattle traps, jerk baits, whatever you want. But today we're gonna be focusing on just a few plastic baits. And we're gonna separate those plastics into two categories, which we've already talked about in the prior video. One of them are the heavily weighted rigs like a T-Rig or a Carolina rig or maybe, maybe a Tokyo rig or a heavily weighted jig and that is going to be a bait that penetrates down into the vegetation and we're pulling it along the bottom trying to pick those fish up that are, are nosed in to the base of the vegetation. The other uh, rigs that we're going to be talking about are weightless wacky worms and Nico rigs and an indicator worm uh, or, or a bobber which we talked a little bit about that are going to go over the top of the vegetation. I'll also be talking about and I want you guys to think about which way you're going to be drifting with the tide. Are you going to be drifting with the tide or are you going to be nosed into the tide uh, uh, using your trolling motor to, to go against the current. Things to remember how is, what's the hyd what is the vegetation doing? Obviously, if it's going, let's say this is going out, that vegetation is gonna be pulled over this way. If it's tides coming in, the vegetation will be pulled over the other way. So it makes a, a bit of a difference on how you fish it. I catch fish moving with the tide, and I also catch fish nosing into the tide. All of the fish out on these banks do not come alive at the same time. Sometimes it's much more effective to fish the heavier weighted stuff going, say, into the current and getting down in the base. Sometimes you're better off floating with the current and going over the top of the vegetation. I'll try to explain a little bit about that as I'm talking about the, uh, the techniques and the, the, uh, the rigs that we're using. So I'm going to start off by talking about a one of my favorites, that's the Carolina rig. I'm not going to go over every uh, heavily weighted rig that we went through because you fish them all the same. Whether it's a Carolina rig, whether it's a Texas worm rig, whether it's a heavily weighted jig, or a drop shot with a heavily heavy weight, you're going to fish them all the same way because we're trying to get them down, penetrating through the vegetation and working that along the base. So today I'll be demonstrating with a short leader Carolina rig and remember this is a half an ounce, maybe three quarters of an ounce, whatever it is that you need to get down there and fish. We're going to, for demonstration purposes, again that buoy wouldn't be out here, we're going to be fishing a lane out here and if we know that that lane is two or three feet wide we're not only going to fish the lane, but we want to fish both edges of it where the vegetation may not be growing quite as heavily, but it's still there. So the thing that you really have to get used to on this is pulling it through vegetation and just knowing that it's not stuck on the bottom. You're, that is the technique. It's going to be pulling through a lot of crap. You're going to be pulling through, uh, you're going to be pulling vegetation off your, your weights and your baits a lot. If you're not doing that, you're not fishing aggressively enough. So the technique that I like to use is simply throwing out, letting that, uh, letting your rig get to the bottom and always waiting for five seconds, 10 seconds, just to see if something's gonna pick that up. Uh, with this particular technique, what we don't wanna do is lift the rod tip up and try to pull it up over the vegetation. That's not what we're trying to do. There are situations when we will do that, but for right now, let's think about pulling it through the base of the vegetation. So we want to drop our rod tip and point it directly at our bait and use the reel handle 
to move it along the bottom and it's hung up right now you can't see that but i could feel the tightness uh, of that weight pulling into some vegetation i want to pop it right through and just hold it now especially with this carolina rig this is a perfect situation because i know my weight has popped through the base of some type of vegetation and i know that my bait whether it's a worm or a creature bait is going to be following it in a, in a foot or two. So I've popped the weight through. Now I can reel very slowly knowing that that, uh, that my bait is going to be coming through that same area following the, the, the bait will be following the weight. And that's usually after you pop the weight through is usually when you're going to get that bite as soon as the bait comes popping through that. I hope I'm explaining that right. So once again, with this rig or any bottom bouncing rig, whether it's a jig, T-rig or anything, we're throwing out, gonna let it get to the bottom, give it 10 seconds, keep your rod tip pointed at the bait, resist the urge to every time you feel something get hung up to try to pull it out. Pull it out with the reel. And we're just gonna work it all the way back to the boat very slowly. Every time it pops through vegetation, that's a sign that that's a really good sign because that means you're down there, you're on the bottom, you're in that cover, and your bait will be following your weight maybe at the next turn of the reel. And that's when you should expect boom, boom, that hit. And if we are going to fish, if that in, uh, buoy out there is our honey hole, we're going to want to fish maybe five feet to one side, work it in, right down the gut, all the way over to maybe five feet on the other side of that buoy, fishing the edges of the zone that is coming into our lane. Because remember, a lot of times the fish will hold in the heavy vegetation with their eyeballs in that lane. They'll just waiting for something to come down there and they'll pop out of the heavy vegetation to grab your, uh, to grab whatever it is you're using. And we talked about baits. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys a quick rundown of the baits I use. It's real simple. I stay with green pumpkins, uh, browns, cinnamon, black, uh, watermelon, and purple. Those are my basic colors. My basic worms are a Yamamoto Cinco, a, a five inch, a six inch. I love a cut tail and I fish cut tails from five to seven inches. Um, I'll throw robo worms. As far as creature baits go, same colors. You know, everything that Yamamoto, Yamamoto makes in a creature bait is good out here. Uh, D-bombs are great. Uh, rodents, any type of craw. The things that you have confidence in and the colors that you have confidence in, put them on here and, and use your confidence base. It's just the techniques that I'm talking about. Now let's go into a, one of my favorite rigs. And that rig is a weightless wacky. Pretty easy to fish. Uh, and we're gonna go over that quickly, but I, I'm gonna really get into a little more detail when we turn this from a weightless wacky into a Nico rig by just obviously putting a, a nail weight in them. With the wacky worms, let's just say that in this particular situation, the tide is moving this way. I want to fish this weightless wacky going into the tide with my bow moving into the tide. The reason being, this is not a penetrating bait. It's gonna go over the top of the vegetation. So if we're fishing this way, the tide's coming this way, and this vegetation is rolled over towards me, these baits are gonna come up, they're gonna drop on the vegetation and go over the top of them. So what I can do is cast out, make a long cast, let it drop down, and now instead of pointing my bait at the vegetation, I'm gonna keep my rod tip up a little higher because we're not trying to put that weightless worm through the bottom. We're going to go over the top of the vegetation and we're gonna let that tide work the worm back to the boat. So we'll let it drift down and touch the top, let it sit, and then we're gonna lift it up and it'll just kinda of move back 
to the boat fishing over the top of the vegetation. There's going to be days when this outfishes the bottom uh, penetrating baits. There's going to be days when the penetrating baits outfish your weightless baits. So you, you want to be prepared to fish both ways. One of my favorite ways after I've tried this is to simply put a heavy nail weight in the head making it an eco rig and I don't have to explain that guy to you guys you know what it is and what I'll do is on a on a um, weightless wacky I'll generally try to hook it somewhere through around the egg sac or in the middle of the worm on a Nico rig I'll, I'll put my hook into closer to the head meaning about right like this instead of having it uh, in the middle instead of having the hook in the middle when I weight this down I like the way it falls that way now this is a trick that I do with the Nico rig heavily weighted Nico rig I am fishing into the current the vegetation is fo folded over pointing at me so I'm going over the top of this vegetation what I like to do is try to simulate what a lot of folks do with a, uh, a lipless, an LV500 or a rattle trap. We all know that that's a killer out here. We can throw it out there and yo-yo it back to the boat. Let it drop down into the weeds, rip it out, let it drop down, rip it out. We know a lot of times when it rips out, as soon as it stops and starts floating back, they come up and grab it. What I'm doing with a Nico rig is bridging the gap between that super, super aggressive uh, reaction strike and a worm strike and what we can do is whip this out make a longer cast than you normally would with a weightless uh, wacky uh, make a long cast let it get down to the bottom and now we're gonna pop that up and reel down to it and let it fall down we're gonna yo-yo it back to the boat just like it was a lipless we want that that uh, Nico rig to stop uh, go down hit the top of the uh, vegetation let it sit there for a minute rip it out and let it drop back down it's going to go to the top of that that yo-yo and as, as soon as it gets to the top and stops that's when they're going to come up and grab it and that can be super effective it kind of... okay the last technique we're going to talk about is the indicator worm with floating rigs and as you can see I have this set really shallow and I'm just demonstrating and you want so you want to set that indicator so that those baits are right on top of the vegetation you can run this rig whether you are drifting with the current or whether you're drifting into the current now in this case let's just say the current is going out and we throw our rig in front of the boat those two worms are going to drop down and hopefully that anchor rig is going to be pulling right over the top of the hydrilla which is faced that way and it should drag across that and the boat will just follow your indicator really great on days where you have a wind uh, in here we don't have wind today but when you have that little bit of, of wave action that indicator will pop up and down like this with the waves and it'll it'll um, it'll work those worms for you the other thing to remember that as this bait is floating if that anchor worm ever gets held up on a uh, piece of uh, vegetation you always have the top worm still working for you so a lot of times it'll be moving and and, and it'll stop or it'll start going over because you have a uh, uh, the bottom worm stuck in vegetation you'll get a bite on the top set on that so be aware of anything different that this indicator will be doing so if it's running in front of the boat and then all of a sudden it starts moving off usually it'll move off to the deeper water especially if it's a big fish they'll pick it up very softly and they'll just start moving out to deeper water and you'll see that indicator just start going that's not moving with the tide it's not moving with the wind you know that that's a fish and you want to set on them so that can either be fish going with the tide and let the indicator float in front of the boat or if you are um, going against the tide you're going to be throwing it out and letting the tide bring it back to the boat and just keeping contact with the indicator meaning if you're going against the tide you're throwing that up a little farther it's going to be floating back to the boat 
Either way, that can work. Now here we're fishing this indicator through a little break in the toolies here and we're just letting it float out from the current and we know that there's a trough out there. So that's allowing us to keep this two worm setup running right through the trough where we want. And on days like today, where you have a front moving in, small fronts moving in and out, the fishing is really tough. Don't expect these techniques to just fill your boat up. We're looking to get that one fish here and there every day that's just going to increase our catch. You've got to be patient and let these techniques work for you. Even though I'm not catching fish right now, I really feel like this technique that I'm using is one of the, the techniques that if I'm going to catch a fish today, it's going to be on something like I'm doing right now. it is all right that's what the two worm rig will get you with a floating indicator on these tough days let's get away from here uh, one other thing about about this this floating setup here let's say we're trying to fish under the dock and we've got a little wind blowing we can come in here I'll put my power poles down I'll throw, throw this indicator rig out, maybe three or four feet from the dock, and I'll let the wind blow the indicator right in to the styrofoam on that dock. What that does is it keeps those worms right down in position. Sometimes I'll get that indicator and I'll let it drift right underneath between where those uh, uh, styrofoam floats are and let it go right down in there and get way under there. It's kind of the same thing as when you're pitching a worm under there or skipping a worm under a dock, but it allows it to sit under there. And if I get it in that spot, I'll leave it there and I could just hold it there and twitch it around and see what's floating in under that dock. The other thing that you can do, let, let's just turn this around here just for, for demonstration. See all this stuff in here? Let's just say we have two to three feet of depth under those down tulies, or maybe it's a bunch of um, uh, hyacinth that's floating in there. We can throw this outfit in and let the wind blow it in up against there and just let it sit there because we all know how many fish move along these edges. So this is just kind of a bonus tip when it comes to using this particular setup here. So just kind of start thinking about that for, for this spring. All right, guys. I know I threw out a lot of information there, and, and some of it, it's really hard for me to explain. Uh, but uh, if, you want, if, if I can have you guys take one thing out of the last three videos that I talked about, it's how you approach areas and how you um, position your boat. And really uh, from day one we talked about becoming a hydrilla gorilla and marking these spots that is the key because as we go through these these banks and again we're just out here today because the wind's blowing and, and I couldn't film on, on a regular bank we may not be on docks we may be on a, on a Thule bank but if we know five or six spots on that bank because we've been out here and we've, we've used our observation to find these places and we have them marked with either trees or docks or rocks. We have landmarks that we know they're out there and we can approach these areas without the fish knowing that you're there. That is your biggest advantage in fishing. If you don't know that spot is there and you overrun it and you spook the fish out of there, they are so much harder to catch. But because you're thinking about, before you leave the dock, 
I'm going to find these little spots one by one, day by day, week by week, and I'm going to put those in my catalog of areas that I'm going to really concentrate on when I'm on this bank, and you know that that spot's there, that is your key advantage. So just remember that. With is When you're fishing these areas, give them time, have some patience, and we've went over a lot of techniques. Try two or three techniques on one spot. Make sure you throw a penetrating bait along the base. Make sure you throw a, a floating bait on the top because all the fish don't feed the same way every day. They don't feed the same time every day. But there's nothing set in stone. Try different colors every now and then, different sizes of baits. And you're going to develop your own sense of um, what you need to do out of here. You're going to get your own confidence and you'll start being able to fish your style and be comfortable and that's what it's all about being comfortable with your style of fishing having the confidence in your style of fishing and when that happens when you start getting bites on these oddball things you start catching a few fish it's like a domino effect you have that confidence and you'll just continue to build build build, build. it doesn't happen overnight but day by day week by week month by month year by year and you'll just become more consistent and you'll you'll just keep catching more and more fish so thank you guys for watching if you have not subscribed go ahead and subscribe tell a friend make sure you watch all the videos i'm hoping to see you guys out on the water and uh, uh, it's winter now fishing is tough but all of these techniques can be rolled over into the spring and summer and they're really uh, effective year round. You're just using different baits and different uh, techniques from day to day. Thanks for watching. See you guys on the water.